Hello, dear sisters. Um, I'm very glad and privileged that again you are joining me at my home for a little study. Actually, it's not going to be a really little study. It will be a study in 10 parts. And the subject is really heavy on my heart. We are going to talk about women's suffering. And I'm sure if you were sitting next to me right now in my living room around me and I ask you to raise your hand, if you never suffered, I'm sure probably not even one hand will be raised because we all suffered, we all suffer in many, many ways. Maybe you're going through breast cancer right now, that's excruciating suffering, and you just lost your breasts. Maybe your husband has just died. Maybe you're living with an unbelieving husband, which is also extremely difficult and sometimes brings a lot of suffering to a woman. Maybe you're suffering from recurring miscarriages. Maybe you're suffering from a closed womb. Whatever your suffering is, we all suffer. And I want to um, encourage you, my dear sister, do not despair. And in my study that I'm going to present before you, um, I wanted to share 10 ways that will actually help you cope with suffering. And ultimately, which is obviously the most important thing, will help you to bring the ultimate glory to the Lord in the midst of your suffering which is the most important thing. It's all about God's glory, us bringing him the ultimate glory in the midst of anything, whether suffering, good days, bad days, difficult days, etc. So be prepared, grab your Bible, pray, of course, before you start the study. Maybe even join me for the study with your friend. That will be also wonderful so you can later discuss what you have just heard. And listen to one part at a time and just I hope and pray that the study will be used, you know, mightily in your life. It will be encouraging, it will be inspiring and helpful to you. And you're probably thinking, look at this blooming young woman, you know, what does she have to say to us about suffering? What does she know about suffering? You know, and that's so interesting that sometimes our looks, so to say, can be misleading. And sometimes in the church, you know, an outworldly, uh, out, yeah, uh, the lady that looks on the outside appearance, that she looks that she's all put together and she looks blooming and wonderful, but inside she can, she can be screaming. You know, her heart might be torn with pain of suffering. And that's why it is so important to get to know our sisters in Christ intimately and closely so we can gain access to their hearts and to their suffering so they can share with us and we can carry their burdens with them and help them cope with their suffering. So looks are sometimes a little bit misleading, you know. So in part one of our suffering, I hope you're ready, I hope you prayed, I hope your Bibles are there. I, try to, I will try to go through my study as fast as possible for the sake of time. Part one, in part one, we're going to talk about embracing your suffering. And that might just overwhelm you even thinking about it. You might say, how can I embrace me just losing my breasts to breast cancer? How can I embrace um, me going through recurring miscarriages and never be able to carry a baby, baby to term? How can I embrace that? But please be patient, bear with me, and you will understand where I am coming from. Very often when we suffer, we want to run from our suffering. We want to escape the pain and suffering. We want to run from it or if possible, pretend like it's not even there. Suppress it, put our artificial band-aids over it, or over our wounds. We'll, sometimes we'll do anything to avoid, avoid suffering. And this is not a biblical way of coping with suffering. The biblical way of coping with suffering is, first of all, embracing it and casting it upon the Lord. One of the worst ways we can, um, what we can do is to is fight with, against our suffering. And usually when we fight against suffering, we are fighting against the Lord. And guess who is going to prevail? Uh, and that's the last thing you, you want to do, is to fight against the Lord and fight against suffering. Um, we will never prevail. So, the best way is to embrace suffering. 
let us look at some profound scriptures for us to gain the biblical perspective on God's involvement in suffering and the source of it. Only if you have a biblical, biblical understanding on suffering, you will be able to go through it victoriously, through the, shadow, the, through the valley of the shadow of death, and you will have the supernatural peace in your heart. Open your Bibles and let us look at Job 23, 13. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he does. 23, 14. For he performeth these things that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. 23, 15. Therefore am I troubled at his presence when I consider I am afraid of him. Job 42, 2. I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Job 33, 11. He putteth my feet to the st in, in the stalks, he marketh all my paths. 33, 12. Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Job 33, 13. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. Job 9, 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against him and has prospered? Job 12, 10. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? So we see in these verses they talk about, the, 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 about God's counsel that will be performed and shall stand, and that the Lord does whatever He desires without consulting anybody or giving any account to anybody. He is the one who performs the things appointed to us, including suffering. He's the one who performs those things, and He has His hand upon our suffering. And the life of Job, obviously, and many other biblical suffering heroes prove it. Striving against the Lord in suffering and His unsearchable ways is pointless. That's why we have to embrace our suffering. Without the understanding of God's sovereign involvement in the affairs of men, you will not be able to embrace suffering. You have to embrace the Lord in His sovereignty first and then you will be able to embrace suffering. And that is a key thought. Embrace the Lord in His sovereignty. And go through those verses once again. Meditate upon, upon those verses. See what it truly means that the Lord is involved in all the affairs of man. Embrace Him in His sovereignty, and then you will be able to embrace your suffering. Let us look at some more verses. Isaiah 45, 7, the Lord is speaking. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. 45, 9. Woe unto him who striveth with his maker. Let the potsheads strive with the potsheds of the earth. Shall the clay to he, say to him that fashioneth it, What maketh thou? All thy work he has no hands. So obviously, obviously the answer, no, we are just Sheds. We cannot strive with his maker and say such a blasphemous thing. You have no hands. You don't know what you're doing. We cannot say. And every time when I read this verse, I always remember about this young, beautiful woman that was adopted from Russia. I read about her in a book on adoption. She didn't have any hands. She was born without arms, actually, without arms. And she cannot say, you know, to the Lord, why did she, you create me that way? She actually coped wonderfully with her suffering and she embraced it. And she just knows that, that that's the Lord created her. And yes, it is difficult not to have arms, obviously, but she embraced her suffering. Isaiah 46, 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient time, the, the times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Ecclesiastes 7.13 Consider the work of God, for who, can, for who can make that straight which he has made crooked? 
obviously no one if the lord wants to for a child to be born without hands or the child to be born with physical affirmities that's how you will be born and even i have uh, some things with my body that i was born with that are in the sight of the world would say imperfect you know but that's how the lord created me and i cannot say anything against it and the same with affairs of man he is involved he's controlling everything we cannot say that it's not right whatever he's doing uh, verse uh, chapter 7 verse 14 in the day of prosperity be joyful but in the day of adversity consider god also has set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him what can we say he um, creates evil he makes peace what can we say daniel 435 and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can say his hand none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou we cannot say anything against his ways against what or against his wisdom we're just potsheds how can we understand god's infinite ways or god's infinite wisdom it's impossible this verse verses clearly show us that the lord is the one who creates evil which means that he originates catastrophic cataclysmic painful events in the world and in the lives of inhabitants in the world which means us <laughs> on the bigger and smaller scale god is not the author of evil we all know that but he uses evil and pain in the lives of christians as a sanctification tool it makes us holy it makes us pure it purges us of self and we all know that because suffering crucifies the flesh and and turning the evil into something good at the end god does all his pleasure we cannot question him and his motives for why he does what he does why he allows cancer in some women's lives why he allows closed women in women's wives lives why he allows the death of children in, in our lives we how can we question he's too unsearchable we're but dust we're just but pot sheds so dear sister embrace your suffering and do not question the lord god is love and the suffering he has allowed in your life is under god's under, under god's control under his loving hands loving eyes take heart in the fact that he's there for you we just read he's involved he's controlling everything and he will never give us more than we can bear he is intimately involved in every moment of your suffering so take heart that was part one of our study i hope you were blessed and encouraged god bless